Guests, please take your seats. Guests, please direct your attention to the slideshow at the
2017. Good evening. Welcome to our 152nd commencement ceremony. I am Dr. Rita Tolliver Roberts, Vice President of Academic Advancement, and will serve as presiding officer for this evening's event. I now call to order these commencement exercises. Kindly remain standing for the singing of our national anthem by Natasha Moore. Natasha is a current student pursuing a bachelor's degree in human resource management. Consistent with the mission created in 1865 by our founder, Thomas May Pierce, Pierce College equips adult learners in a personalized, student-centered environment to achieve their goals and fulfill workforce needs. Today, we continue this legacy through innovative learning platforms, the expansion of our degree programs, and strategic partnerships. The first new learning platform is Pierce Fit. Pierce Fit provides students with the week-to-week -week option of attending class in person or online. Pierce College is the only institution in the region and perhaps the country offering this innovative delivery across the entire curriculum. The second new learning platform is competency-based education, CBE. CBE offers a fully online, self-paced, and personalized way to learn for individuals with experience in information technology. Through CBE, learners are placed on the most direct path toward completing their IT degree. This year, we also began offering our second graduate program, a Master of Science in Healthcare Administration. All of this, peers fit, competency-based education, and the expansion of our graduate programs have been developed in support of providing accessible, market-relevant, student-centered, and expedient opportunities for students to complete their degrees. In joint partnership with Pierce College, Year Up provides young adults with the professional development and experiential learning opportunities to prepare them for their careers ahead. I am proud to report this evening that our first four Year Up graduates are receiving their bachelor's degree. Congratulations. The Pierce College graduating class of 2017 is 302 members strong.
with 17 graduates in our Masters of Science in Organizational Leadership and Management program, 15 accounting graduates, 100 business administration graduates, 19 integrated leadership graduates, five human resource management graduates, 15 healthcare administration graduates, seven health information administration graduates, 20 health information technology graduates, two medical coding certificate graduates, 14 general studies graduates, 31 information technology graduates, four technology management graduates, 37 paralegal studies graduates, three legal studies and business graduates, and 15 criminal justice studies program graduates on this historic evening. We are pleased to report that many members of this evening's graduating class receive significant support from their employers. The list of organizations is too long to mention individually, but kindly recognize them with a round of applause. Let's also recognize all the women and men who serve in our military. Thank you for your service. Allow me a few moments to introduce some very special people. An institution depends on its board of trustees for guidance and support. Trustee titles and affiliations are listed in the commencement program. Trustees, please stand when your name is called. Those attending this evening are Barbara Pretzman, Chair, William Morgan, Class of 87, Vice Chair, Joseph Barstis, Peter Caputo, Lisa Curran, Keith Davidson, Dr. Alfonso Denson, Mark Edwards, Robert Grasso, Tom Karinchak, Dr. Charmaine Matlock Turner, Catherine McCluskey, Tom McLaughlin, class of 84, Geraldo Monroy, Larry Scanlon, David Silverman, Scott Smith, class of 76, Dr. Brian Swift, Lisa Walker, and Renee Bing Yancey, class of 90. Also in the audience this evening are former board chair and trustee emeritus, Mr. Lamar Brock, and former board chair, Mr. Greg West. Please recognize with your applause the members of the Pierce College Board of Trustees. The reputation of an institution is built on the quality of its programs, services, and graduates. The overseers of that quality are the expert faculty, staff, and administration of the college. Would you now please recognize the Pierce College faculty, staff, and administration. There is another special group to be introduced. Without them, this historic evening would not be possible. Would you please stand and be recognized, the family and friends of the class of 2017. Thank you. Please welcome, please 
welcome our president and CEO, James J. Morgiati, who will deliver a salute to the class of 2017. Good evening, everyone. Before I salute the graduates, I too would like to pay tribute to the family and friends of the class of 2017. Thanks for the love and support you've provided to these graduates. I extend my warmest appreciation for all you've done to help this graduating class fulfill its dreams. My role in this evening's program is to salute the class of 2017. That's an easy one. Piece of cake. You see, this Pierce class of 2017 is a group of courageous, hardworking, high achievers. They are tough, they are talented, and they are terrific. I'm just getting started. <laughs> Class of 2017, you have showed us how to get this done. Yes, you have taught us. Yes, you came to Pierce and learned about business or healthcare or IT or the law, but in the process, you taught us. We learned many things from you. Most importantly, we learned what it takes to overcome significant obstacles to achieve goals, to earn those college degrees that will be awarded this evening, to walk across this stage with your family and friends cheering because you are a college graduate. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the class of 2017 is young at heart, but older in age than traditional college students. They carry substantial personal and professional responsibilities. They don't have the luxury of parents paying their tuition bills, or any bills for that matter. And as adults, they often must contribute their time, their talents, and their resources to their communities while dealing with family, work, and community obligations, they had to attend class, read, study, perform research, write papers, do homework assignments, and work on group projects to get here. But they got here. Most non-traditional college students who start degree programs never finish them. Class of 2017, you are the leaders in that regard because you are the completers. Congratulations, you have beaten the odds. Many members of the class of 2017 have also overcome unusual circumstances to earn their degrees. While well, I would like very much to speak about all of them individually this evening, time restrictions only allow me to feature the following examples. The first is Bryant Gumbert. <laughs> Brian is graduating this evening with a bachelor's degree in integrated leadership. Brian joined the Navy right out of high school, where he served for six years. He tried college back in the 90s, but after a few courses, life got in the way. Finally, in 2007, at the age of 41, he took another shot. And after seven years, completed his associate degree. In In 2014, he made a vow to complete his bachelor's degree by the age of 50. He did it. He finished his last class on August the 16th, 2016, his 50th birthday. Yeah. 
Congratulations, Brian. You taught us determination. Another determined graduate from the class of 2017 is Milana Williams. Her journey at Pierce started in 1998. Milana was in and out of Pierce for many years and even lost her job when the Great Recession hit. After a long period unemployed and a longer period away from Pierce, she returned to the college in 2011. This time, she was determined to finish what she started. She completed her bachelor's degree in business administration and earned merit scholarships and honors along the way. Congratulations, Milana. Next up, Asia Jennings Woodall. Hey, Asia. Asia will receive a bachelor's degree in healthcare administration. She started at Pierce in 2011 as a young married mother fresh out of the foster care system. During the journey to her degree, Asia endured a period of homelessness and the death of her spouse. This evening, she walks across this stage as a college graduate, ready to give back to others. Congratulations, Asia. You taught us perseverance. It's been almost a 20-year journey to a college degree for Marlene Markle, who graduates this evening with a bachelor's degree in business administration. Marlene took her first Pierce class in 1998 and continued through 2002, but needed to take a five-year break to devote to her family. She returned in 2007 and continued until completion. Congratulations, Marlene. You taught us commitment. Trina Wallace. Trina encountered a few twists and turns in her decade-long quest for her degree, including a relocation from Virginia to Delaware and a successful battle with stage three breast cancer. <laughs> this evening, she receives a degree, a bachelor's degree in business administration, ever grateful to those who assisted her along the way. Trina, a real estate professional, gives back to her community by helping homeless, mentally ill, and those fleeing domestic violence find affordable housing. Congratulations, Trina. You taught us gratitude. Anthony Young taught us the importance of family. This evening, Anthony and his daughter, Benet Mirando, You know the punchline, they graduate together. <laughs> Binet with a bachelor's degree in information technology and Anthony with a bachelor's in criminal justice. <laughs> At last year's commencement ceremony, Anthony received an associate degree alongside his wife, Emma, who earned her bachelor's degree. Another family graduating together this evening includes Ramona Watson, our student speaker. And her two daughters, Brenda Elridge and Renee Martin. And there is a married couple in the class of 2017, Melissa and Brian Phillips.
Pierce is a welcoming place for students of all ages. The average age of the class of 2017 is 36 years young. The youngest members of this class are Edward Urez, who is 20 years young, and Sheila Hill, who is 21 years young. At Pierce, we believe in lifelong learning. Graduating in the class of 2017 with a master's degree at the age of 65 years young is Shedrick Nance. And at the age of 60 years young is Renee Ingram. Shedrick and Renee are really lifelong learners, aren't they? The graduates featured are representative of this outstanding class we are honoring this evening. While it's impossible to speak about all of the members individually, suffice it to say that we are proud of each and every one of them who have successfully completed this journey. Class of 2017, as you start a new journey, please know that Pierce is your partner for life and will provide continuing support throughout your careers. Graduates, on behalf of the entire Pierce community, I salute you for making your dreams come true. All my best wishes are with you this evening and always. You will forever be held in my highest regard. Thank you. Dr. Kathy Littlefield, Associate Professor and Faculty Chair of Business, and I'm delighted to introduce our student speaker. Ms. Ramona Watson is graduating this evening with a Bachelor of Science degree in Business Administration with a concentration in Management. She's graduating magna cum laude, having earned a 3.86 GPA, and has also been awarded the honor of who's who among students in American universities and colleges. Ramona is a manager at the Philadelphia Water Department and has been employed with the City of Philadelphia for almost 28 years. She's graduating tonight with her two daughters, Renee Martin and, Bre and Brenda Eldridge. And her daughter, Ram Ramona and her daughter, Renee, will be continuing to Pierce to pursue their Master of Science degree in Organizational Leadership and Management. Please welcome Ramona Watson. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening, peers, graduates, staff, faculty, and honored guests. As I reflect on my career, my educational journey, and my life in general, I've often wondered, what is my purpose? Imagine a girl who grows up in Philadelphia, performs well academically, and then graduates from public high school. This high school graduate, now a young single mother, lands a job with the city of Philadelphia as a water meter reader. She praises the city for allowing her to maintain a stable home and way of life for her children. She appreciates having all the small things that many do not have, and so she works hard to show her appreciation. 20 years pass, and she has excelled in the workplace due to her hard work, diligence, and dedication. However, at the age of 42, she realizes that she has been so focused on her career and her family that she forgot about the one goal yet to be accomplished, furthering her education. After much consideration, she enrolls in Pierce College. That girl, that Pierce student, is me. Words cannot express the euphoria I feel when I share my Pierce experience, achievements, and challenges. Pierce College had become my second home. Pierce provided me with the tools and resources to be more productive and effective in the workplace. I've been in management for over 10 years, but Pierce Business Administration courses 
have allowed me to enhance the skills that I already possess while also providing me with new skills. I had several reasons to pursue a college education. One was self-gratification. I had to prove to myself that I could do it. I had allowed fear to consume me. I wasn't just scared, I was afraid. Afraid of failing, afraid of competing against my younger counterparts, afraid of disappointing my parents and children, afraid of embarrassing myself. I was afraid of the unknown, which is where the excuses began. Since I was doing well in my career, I told myself that I didn't need a college degree. I had a few promotions, but inside, I knew I had a bigger purpose. My second reason for pursuing a college education was to set a new standard within my immediate family. Unfortunately, my anxiety and fears had consequences. My daughters did not go on to college after completing high school. I blamed myself for this because I felt I could have been a better role model for them. Growing up, I watched my mother work and struggle to raise four children on her own. And still, we sometimes went without the bare essentials. How could I ever repay her? My mother never gave up, and she always did the best she could. I wanted to prove to her that all her hard work was not in vain. In addition, I had three children to whom I wished to be a role model. I wanted to show them that no matter what happens, what adversities they face, that it's never too late to accomplish your goals. I wanted to have a second chance to support my daughters and encourage them to go further with their education and their aspirations. I wanted my parents and, chil my parents and children to be proud of me. Two months after I enrolled, my daughters joined the Pierce family so that we can take this journey together. And this made me so very proud. <laughs> Some years ago, my immediate supervisor retired, and his supervisor asked me if I held a degree. That's when the realization set in that there would be not be, wouldn't be any more promotions without a degree. I also ran the risk of losing potential promotions in the future, perhaps to someone less qualified, but with a degree. I worried about what would happen if one day it was determined that my position and my salary would be more suitable to somebody with a degree. <sighs> Working your way up from the bottom is one thing, but going to another company in a managerial position is another. My many years of experience, although an asset at my current company, could not stand alone within another company without the necessary credentials. Earning my college degree to go along with that experience has set my mind at ease. The benefits were vast and the feeling of achievement immeasurable. My time here at Pierce has been busy but enjoyable, intense but rewarding, challenging but necessary. On January the 7th, 2013, I attended my very first class. I was still afraid, but willing to take that journey. So as I sit back and reflect on the last four years, I am overwhelmed and I am overjoyed. My peers' experience had allowed me to resolve so many personal impediments that I had been carrying around that many of us probably carried when we started. I used to cringe at the thought of writing a 10-page paper. <laughs> but what alleviates that feeling? Just getting started, one page at a time. Although that's not the case with statistics. <laughs> I believe that statistics is just a cruel joke just to make sure you're paying attention. <laughs> But it requires more than just paying attention. It requires many hours of tutoring and even more hours of prayer. <laughs> and I'm still trying to figure out how I'm going to use that one. <laughs> so in closing, I would like to give a special thanks to my mother, my father, and my children for being so supportive, understanding, and encouraging. A special thanks to my friends, Tanya Bonner, William Stewart and William Angelo Jean, who often felt like 
they were attending college themselves. <laughs> Thanks for allowing you, allowing me to read you all of my papers without you falling asleep or pretending that another call was coming in. <laughs> Thanks to all my friends and coworkers who told me you got this. Thanks to all my team members who actually did their part during those group assignments. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> I would also like to thank the Water Department executive staff for their support, encouragement, but most of all, their funding. <laughs> and I would like to thank all of the peer staff and faculty members who have helped to make my time at Pears an enjoyable, awesome experience. I would like to give a special thanks to Dr. Gail DiGiacomo. <laughs> Dr. Charlene Glenn. Dr. John King. Dr. Melissa Kowalski. And Dr. Michael Bentel who have, perhaps unbeknownst to them, played a major role during my educational journey. Last but certainly not least, I would like to thank God because through him all things are possible. <laughs> so, what is my purpose? My purpose is to be a mother, a daughter, a sister, to be a friend, a coworker, and a lifelong student with the zest for learning. My purpose is to be a comforter, a supporter, a provider, and a counselor, to be an advisor, an advocate, a victor, and a leader. My purpose is to be thoughtful, considerate, dependable, and decent. My purpose is to be diligent, resilient, and consistent, to be strong, confident, and assertive, my purpose is to strive, to believe, to achieve, and to be educated. Educator and author Stephen Covey said, I am not a product of my circumstances. I am a product of my decisions. I have decided to be the best me I can be. That is my purpose. Thank you, and congratulations to the class of 2017. I got one more, I mean, before I start. All right. <laughs> Shout them out. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. My name is Andre Brown, and I'm pleased to introduce our keynote speaker for this evening, Ms. Monica Malpass. <laughs> Monica Malpass, co-anchor of ABC Action News at 5, has worked as an anchor and reporter for television networks in Philadelphia and throughout North Carolina for more than three decades. She has covered every U.S. presidential election since 1988, as well as high-profile events such as the inaugurations of Presidents George W. Bush and President Bill Clinton, the praying clash of John F. Kennedy Jr., the funeral of Princess Diana in London, and the Eagles Super Bowl appearance in 2005. Ms. Malpass received her Master's of Arts degree in Political Science from Villanova University, a Bachelor of Arts degree in Journalism from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, was a Rotary Scholar to the University of Puerto Rico, and has an honorary, uh, honorary doctor in Humane Letters from Newman College. Without further ado, please join me in welcoming Ms. Monica Malpass. Everybody, how you doing? Nice to see you too. Thank you so much to all of you at Pierce College. 
to all of the students of 2017, to your wonderful families. What a joy to see you here tonight. Let me shake to you. I just want to give you a couple of thoughts as you move forward. I know most of you are non-traditional students. Maybe you're sitting there thinking, what does a news lady know about what I've had to do to get here tonight? <laughs> really? Well, let me tell you a couple things. I grew up in the South in the 60s when young ladies of any race were not thought to do more than be a teacher, a nurse, a housewife, and believe me, I have tremendous abiding love for nurses, teachers, and housewives. That is hard work. So it takes nothing away from any of those professions. I just knew as a little girl I wanted to be something else. I didn't happen to have those gifts of being a nurse, a teacher, and I was a wife for a bit. <laughs> but I knew that I needed something different. And it took me, and continues to take me my entire life to convince my own family, my friends, my peers, my classmates, there can be something different than just what everybody's doing. So if you've had to do some convincing of yourself, as she mentioned, if you've had to convince your family, your friends, or bosses, your fellow peers at work, there's another way to go about it I would say hats off to you because to swim upstream, not because I wanted to be difficult, but because I just saw things differently than the people around me. There's nothing wrong with that. So I would first of all congratulate you for having the grit, the determination to overcome every single thing it took, every childcare problem, every bus you missed, every homework assignment you forgot it was due because you only got two hours sleep because you have two jobs and you go to school. I got you. I got it. It takes tremendous courage to do what nobody else thought of. I understand that. I come from very humble beginnings, so nobody set aside college money. I had to work. Nothing wrong with working and going to school, but it's hard, I know. And nobody wants to have a mountain of debt that faces them for the next 30 years they can't even begin to crawl out from under. I know. And then when you graduate, which is an amazing thing, I hope you will take today and say, good for me, because you must be proud of you. Your family's proud of you. I am oozing with pride for you. It's huge, but I want you to celebrate what you have done. Nobody else did this. You did it. That's incredible. And then I want to tell you a couple quick pointers going forward, because even though this was at the beginning of my career, it continues to apply through the middle and what I hope to be the rest of my life, every little struggle or difficulty or challenge, if you want to look at it like that, that you'll face that I faced. I got out of UNC Chapel Hill after I worked my way through college. I had honors degrees. I was one of the top students in the class in journalism. I couldn't get a job. That's the truth. I applied to 50 television stations, mid and small size. Look, I didn't apply to New York. I'm not stupid. But I wanted to apply to something that was a decent size, so I applied to small ones, mid size. 50 requests, 50 if you will, solicitations, please would you consider hiring me? So I sent 50 letters that I typed myself on my next door neighbor's electric typewriter because we could only afford the rotary manual kind. It didn't look as nice. <laughs> so Paul Brayton and his family, I grew up with his little girls and his son Stephen, he was kind enough to loan me the mechanical typewriter that looked nice. And I banged out 50 letters myself asking, can I please have an interview? I got 50 no's. Honors graduate, UNC Chapel Hill, one of the top in the class. 50 no's. And you know how you know it's a no? Because a no letter is skinny. <laughs> it doesn't have the application that puffs it up. So I'd go to the mailbox every day and see another little skinny letter. I was like, oh my gosh. If I can't get a job, 
right? Now, I know most of you have jobs and your employers are on board and they've been tremendous, but I'm saying the next time you wanna improve or increase or get a raise or go for the next level or be a manager, this applies to you the rest of your life. You have to be creative. You have to know, I know you've got the determination, I know you've got the hard work ethic, you are embodiments of that here tonight. But here's the thing you might not have thought of, the world's not really very fair. So whatever you happen to be at that moment, somebody's gonna say, as they said 50 times to me in a couple of months, even though I graduated early with honors, right? You got that part, all right, they didn't care. Nobody asked to see my grades, nobody asked to see my resume. They just said, you don't have a tape because I was a journalism writing major, I wasn't a TV major. I'm not sorry I did it that way, I turned out to be a great, a great writer but it was harder to get that first job, so I had to think on my feet. So I took the three nicest no letters, right? Not the ones that said, oh, you'll never be anything. You didn't do this right. We don't care what you, right? I didn't take those letters. I took the ones that said, it's with great disappointment we tell you we don't have, you know, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, at least they were nice, right? The ones I could drive my own Toyota Starlet to, so it couldn't be, you know, California. It had to be somewhere I could drive to. And I called those people up anyway. And I didn't get all attitude-y. And I didn't say, you know, do you know who you're talking to? I just got out of, bleh, you know, I'm a, no, I didn't do that. I said, good afternoon. I received your letter that you don't have an opening for me at this moment. Thank you for responding. Okay, be nice, kill them with kindness. And then I said, but I just wanted to let you know I'm going to be in your area interviewing I was practicing with my mother. I was in the area interviewing with her to practice. And I just wanted to ask you, do you have a few minutes? I could meet you because I know you don't have something today, but you might have something down the road and I think you'd like to know me. Don't, you know, there's a difference between confident and cocky. Nobody likes somebody that's got all the answers, that knows everything, they've done everything and they're the best. Uh, that's not me. However, I know a few things, and I'm pretty good at a couple, and I'm willing to learn, and I don't take no very well. So I like to think of the word no, and, 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 and I don't hear no. I hear maybe. I hear not today. I hear not yet. I hear, okay. So guess what? I got three responses. All right, come on by. Now, if I had done what most of my friends did, and I take no blame from them, because it's hard to do this. It's hard to get 50 rejections out of 50. Not a single person said, we see you as the next Diane Sawyer. You're going to do great things. No, 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 no. So I got 50 no's. I took three of them, the nice ones, said, please anyway, can I swing by? Three said yes. Two still went like this. That is terrific. Thank you so much for coming, but no. Uh-uh. The one station that didn't say that, didn't welcome me with open arms for swinging by, they had said no. But the news director did barely open the door. And when somebody barely opens the door to the next job, the next raise, the big thing that you would like to do five years from now, 10 years from now, tomorrow, you gotta know when to walk right on through. So the news director, Dave Emery said, why should I hire you because you don't have this, that, the other thing, blah, blah. We got a room full of people that have all that. And I said, Mr. Emery, here's a thought. You're right, I don't have the audition tape that you said the others have, but could I do an audition with a camera person today? Give me any subject, any topic. I'll do a story right now. You don't have to put it on television. It was Winston-Salem, North Carolina at the NBC station. You don't have to put it on the air. Just may I please audition. That's the creativity. You gotta think on your feet because he's got every answer why this is, and it could be a she too now. Could be, there's no reason why this is ever gonna work. You might never get anywhere in life because they're saying no, no, still no, no. You gotta think. So I said, could I possibly show you what I can do? Now, I don't think he saw, you know, in a glass crystal ball, Diane Sawyer there. What I think he saw was someone who kindly and gently didn't say, okay, I'll just go home now. So I got an audition and guess what he said? We have a part-time job, two days a week. It doesn't pay very much. 
If you need to work at McDonald's the rest of the week to pay your rent, go ahead. We don't mind if our reporters work at McDonald's too. And by the way, I love McDonald's, I love the french fries, that's great. The point was, he was not hiring me to be the next great coming of the news business in Winston-Salem. He was just filling a little slot because this woman will not say no. She won't go home, and, you know, whatever. All right, I got a part-time job and two weeks later, somebody moved to California. I went back in and said, may I please apply for the full-time job? And on and on, you see how it goes? And then I didn't know everything about the business, so here's the second thing. Besides you being creative when somebody says no 50 times, you have to be able to think on your feet creatively. You also have to be willing to learn everything you can from as many people as possible, because you do not know everything. No one does. I still don't. So I learned from the nicest people in the building, and that's my third point. You surround yourself with positive people. Please. Because if you listen to the recorded message that goes on in most of our lives all day, every day, it's how you can't do it, you shouldn't do it, nobody's done it that way. A person of your height and your hair color and your background and your gender, and, you know, your race, nobody's ever, I don't ever want to hear that word again. Because I don't think like that. Again, I don't think I've got all the answers and that I'm the greatest thing since sliced bread, but I do know this, there's no one who will work harder, there's no one who will be more creative and think out of the box, and the funeral home is the finish line. <laughs> so if you give me a chance, I'll do it, and I know looking out at every one of you, if somebody gives you a chance, even a little teeny chance for one-tenth of the salary you thought that new job and that next level should bring you, I know you're going to rock it. And I know you're going to do so well, they're going to come back to you and say, can we please talk to you about a different opportunity that's double the salary? Can we please talk to you about how we have an opening in our other office in media, Berwyn, New York, L.A.? And you have to look at that and see, does it work for me? But I want you to know, if you are creative, if you surround yourself with a positive message and people who love you and believe the best about you, there is nothing, and I really do mean, nothing on this earth you cannot do really well. Because I'm going to be there when you are at the finish line, because I'm still going to be working and interviewing you. They're going to say... That's terrific, and isn't that nice? But again, here in fill in the blank, this city, this town, this business, this office, this cubicle, we've never done it that way. And I want your answer to be, I understand, and thank you so much. See, start being nice. I know you are. Thank you so much. I do understand no one's ever done it this way. But with all due respect, this is 2017. I think you should give me a shot, and I won't disappoint you. And when you do it with a smile, and you have your degree from Pierce, and your determination, and your education, and your smarts, and your hard work ethic, I would really love to be the one who sees how it all turns out, because it's gonna be great. Good luck to you, and I am impressed with you. That's right, 33 years later, I'm still doing it, right? The girl that couldn't get a job. Thank you, Monica. Good evening, graduates. My name's Barbara Prutzman, and I am the chair of the Pierce College Board of Trustees. No big deal, you, you folks are the honorees tonight, and I want to add my name, and on behalf of the rest of the trustees that serve with me. I'd like to second Monica's admiration for your grit and determination. We are all so proud of how hard you've worked to complete the degrees that you're being granted tonight. Thank you very much for your efforts. I also get the chance, and I have the great pleasure, to award our speaker 
with her on it with an honorary degree tonight a doctorate of humane letters monica melpass thank you display this in my home and you have inspired me and I want you to know my 17 year old son my love Jake Cutler is here to watch and what is so important to me that he learned about tonight is there are rock stars all around us he's one and you are too Good evening. I'm Dr. Patrick Coyle, Professor of Information Technology and the 2016 Hamilton Award recipient. I have the distinct honor this evening of announcing the 2017 Hamilton Award recipient. Each year, the college takes this opportunity to recognize a faculty member or an academic administrator who exemplifies academic excellence and integrity. The Hamilton family created the endowment that funds the award. It is named for Dr. William J. Hamilton, former vice president and dean of Pierce College. Dr. Hamilton helped to build the strong reputation of the college during his many years of service to Pierce. A committee of peers of the college selects the awardee each year. As a member of the Pierce College faculty since 2006, our 2017 Hamil Hamilton Award recipient has garnered the respect of students, faculty, and administrators. Our recipient is a trusted and valued colleague, always accessible, knowledgeable, and willing to help, even taking on a mentor role with new faculty members. Our recipient embodies the Pierce mission. She's focused on student success and has that rare ability to be, to be both demanding in the classroom and spoken highly of by her students. Probably most impressive, is, most impressive of all, our recipient is a natural leader. In the face of personal and professional tragedy, our recipient has stepped forward to provide stability and leadership to her department while still balancing a demanding course load. Her work as interim chair is a significant factor in the success of the Legal Studies Department. I am honored and very happy to announce our 2017 Hamilton Award recipient my colleague and friend, Professor Ivy Kemp. <laughs> Professor Kemp, please step forward. Wow, I did not expect that. Um, thank you. Um, I love Pierce College. And I love doing what I do, and mostly because I get to work with these amazing people he up here on the stage who teach me something new every day. And also because I get to work with you guys. And as uh, President Mergiati said earlier, you guys teach us stuff every day. So I am humbled and I am honored and just thank you so much. Congratulations, class. <laughs> Pierce College is especially privileged to honor members of the graduating class who have distinguished themselves in their chosen field of study. We will now present the special awards in the order in which they appear in your program, beginning with the Alumni Association Raymond L. Polzer Class of 52 Academic Leadership Award. Barry James, Class of 2007 and President of the Alumni Association, joins us this evening to present the award.
Good evening. Congratulations to the class of 2017. You are now the newest part of Pierce College's long and vibrant history. Pierce graduates formed the Alumni Association in 1892 to aid and support their alma mater. Six years later, in 1898, the Alumni Association presented its first awards to the outstanding students. It is my pleasure as the president of the Alumni Association to continue that tradition this evening. Recipients of the Raymond L. Paulser Alumni Association Academic Leadership Award are selected based on academic performance and participation in social and community service organization. This year, the Academic Leadership Award will be presented to three graduates. Serena Burns, Tamika McCaskill, and UC Ned. Serena, Tamika, and UC, please come forward. Everybody. My name is Serena Burns. Um, I just want to say, I want to say thank you to all the faculty, the staff for just, just taking me in. Um, oh, I'm nervous. President um, Mergiati, Mergiati for uh, just, just knowing who I was when I walked through the doors, tired and, and, and studying hard. And, um, Teresa Davis and Holly Tillery and Shan Dr. Shanley Be Shannon Begley for just taking me in and the academic advising, all the faculty, all the staff, um, my family, my friends, my husband, I'm trying to be quick, um, my husband, my mom, my grandma, everybody, thank you. And thank you to my Lord Jesus Christ because I couldn't do it without him. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening. My name is UC Ned. <laughs> I am grateful for Pierce. Pierce took me in. I feel as though Pierce is family. And I've had a great journey. I must say that for stats, I had some sleepless nights. So um, thank you. Thank you to all my family and friends, and especially to the faculty and staff here that supported me through my journey. Just thank you guys. Congratulations, everybody. Hi. I am Dr. Gail DiGiacomo, Professor of Accounting and Finance. I am pleased to present this year's Pennsylvania Institute of Certified Public Accountants Award for Excellence in Accounting to Numel Benjamin Rodriguez. In Numel's absence, I am pleased to accept this award on his behalf. Thank you. Tracy Thomas, the Assistant Dean of Student Support Services. Hey, Tracy! <laughs> I am proud this evening to present the Walker Center Award for Academic Achievement and Participation in the Center's Activities to Sierra L. Ford. Sierra? I just want to say thank you to Pierce, my family. I hear y'all. <laughs> thank you to my daughter. I did this because of you. Love you, Skyler. Thank you. Hi. 
Good evening. My name is Linda Curry. I am Associate Professor and Program Manager for General Education. I am here this evening to present the Margaret Obosian Excellence in Writing Award. This award is presented to a graduating senior in any major who exhibits, through completion of one of the qualifying writing projects, distinguishing excellence in writing outcomes. This year's award goes to Ephraim Aponte. Ephraim, please come forward. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So this is how it feels like to be called down on The Price is Right. <laughs> All right, I have a speech, but I'll try to reduce it to less than a minute if possible. Although I apologize for any delays in advance. Let's go. <laughs> this award right here could have gone to anybody, but the fact that Pierce College was very nice to distribute me as the byproduct for it and the recipient for it offers a more blissful feeling than having a piece of chocolate after midnight. Man. In fact, by virtue of the faculty, staff, administrators, and even my fellow graduates over here, Pierce College, as an entity of education, gives you more added peace of mind than every and any life insurance commercial ad you see on daytime TV. Right next to The Price is Right. Now, acknowledgments to my family. My aunt and cousin, thank you for getting me out of the house to play dominoes on a weekend. Thank you. Speaking of which, we're on tonight, right? <laughs> to my grandmother, my beautiful abuelita granny, thank you for your world's greatest coffee. <laughs> to my sister, just for putting up with her annoying little brother. Mom, you're cooking. Keep it going, please. <laughs> Burgers tonight. My father, let's keep talking those sports. Maybe a little politics. You might have heard in closing that there is a phrase for Pierce. You can do this. Well, I think with all due respect on behalf of everybody here, we're gonna change it up a little bit because the fact that we have people in cap and gown, the gold standard might I add, I don't know about you, but as of tonight, June 8, 2017, we did this. <laughs> to do anything, try everything, and you got it. This is your night, let's go. <laughs> Mic drop. That was a dual degree in motivational speaking and IT. A, okay. <laughs> I'll do my best to follow up on that. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. I'm Dr. Adrian Zapala, Professor and Dean of Graduate Studies. In 2013, the Patricia A. Rucker Graduate Studies Award for Academic Excellence was established to recognize an outstanding graduate student within our Graduate Studies program. I'm proud to present this award to Giselle Torres Marte. Giselle, please come forward. Good evening, graduates and family and friends. Thank you so much. I really appreciate all the support from the faculty and the um, peers here. That was wonderful. Thank you so much to my family, my husband, my children, and my sister, my brother, my, and my father and little brother that are here. Thank you so much. Good evening, I'm Ivy Kempf, Professor of Legal Studies. And I'm Cynthia Gentili, Professor of Legal Studies. We stand before you this evening humbled and honored to present 
the Edwin B. Miller Commencement Award for Academic Excellence. This award is presented to a Pierce College Paralegal Studies student who has demonstrated a commitment to making a difference and helping others through his or her work in the legal field. For more than 16 years, Professor Miller served Pierce College as a professor and assistant dean in legal studies. I suspect that many of you have uh, had the great pleasure of knowing or perhaps interacting with Professor Miller at some point. He was a tremendous advocate for students and a warm and supportive colleague and an extraordinary mentor for our alumni. Professor Miller was a kind, well-respected attorney who made the transition to being an educator because he wanted to help others pursue their dreams of a career in the legal field. He built the Legal Studies program into what it is today. Our program is flourishing now because of his love and dedication. Ed was so proud to be a part of Pierce College. We lost Ed Miller last year and we miss him very much, but his spirit is with us as we carry forward with our mission. In his honor, I am proud to announce that a UC Ned is this year's recipient of the Edwin B. Miller Award for Academic Excellence. EUC, you possess the virtues of commitment, scholarship, and compassion that were embodied by Professor Miller. So congratulations. Hello again. Um, the late Professor Miller was not just a friend. He was not just a professor, he was my friend. He was a, he was an, ex, an excellent, listener and a, the perfect motivator. He always encouraged me to move on, to move forward and strive for the best. I miss him and I sure you guys will too. Thank you. We will now begin the roll call of candidates. I am pleased to report that many students in the class of 2017 have earned academic honors through their hard work and dedication. Academic honors will be read with the candidates' names. Graduates will appear on the digital screens when receiving their diploma. Graduates are also invited to have their photograph taken with our keynote speaker, Dr. Monica Malpass. Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Adrian Zapala, Dean of Graduate Studies. I'm pleased this evening to call the role of our organizational leadership and management candidates for graduation. President Mergiati, I have the honor of recommending to you the following list of organizational leadership and management degree candidates. Those present collectively and individually, together with others in absentia, have met all of the requirements for the Master of Science degree. The Master of Science candidates for organizational leadership and management are Kevin Jordan. Miriam Cardona. Kenneth Blair. Danielle Leveda Paul. Laura Michelle Knox. Kim Harris. David B. Ralston. Tia Hall. Celicia Ramonia Tucker.
Good evening. I'm Dr. Kathy Littlefield, Associate Professor and Faculty Chair of Business. And I am proud to conduct the roll call for our counting candidates. <laughs> President Mergiati, I have the honor of recommending to you the following list of accounting candidates. Those present collectively and individually, together in absentia, have met all the requirements for the Bachelor of Science degree. The Bachelor of Science candidates in accounting are Precious Joy Garrett Joyner. <laughs> Olivia Bannister. <laughs> Laquada Jordan. <laughs> Keith Walker. Abel Jose Perez. <laughs> Lorraine V. Spain. Shaquana Shanik Duncan. Charmaine Desiree Williams. Stephanie Estriblet, Adam Francini, Dominique Teresa Harrison, I am now also pleased to conduct the roll call for our business administration candidates. President Mergiati, I have the honor of recommending to you the following list of business administration candidates. Those present collectively and individually, together with others in absentia, have all met the requirements of the Bachelor of Science degree, Associate in Science degree, or Certificate of Proficiency. The Bachelor of Science candidates for business administration are Arthur James Dunkley. Summa cum laude. Jean J. St. Croix. Devora Latarsha Minifield. Shakina Johnson. Shinesa Nicholson, cum laude. Kamisha N. Martin McWhite, magna cum laude. Asta Silla. Tanya L. Rambert. Christopher M. Blaylock. Wendy M. Johnson, magna cum laude. <laughs> Trina Wallace. <laughs> Cynthia Briscoe Williams. <laughs> Angela Deneen Carr. Tiana Janae Odom. Yeah. Ashley M. Clegg, cum laude. Yeah. Renee Martin. Yeah. Anthony Powers. Linda Latrice Mathis. Tamara Haskins. Erica Deeds. Yeah. 
Lisa Christina Placido. Bridget Marie Kane. Michelle Kevlack. Thank you. For that. Joy Ann Yoshida. Myrna J. Coleman, cum laude. Anthony Stephen DiLorenzo, cum laude. Ernest D. Whitaker. Marlena M. Markle, magnum cum laude. Alexandra Foga. <laughs> Curtis Lee Brooks Johnson, cum laude. <laughs> Danielle Noel. Ryan James Brown. Melissa Sue Phillips. Marlena B. Gordon. Chantel Mack. Sarah Burns. Milana Williams. The Associates of Science Candidates in Business. Renee Ingram. Robin Juanita Litton Turner. Andre Carroll. Jennifer Saunders. Angela Denise Smith. Muriel D. Horton. Isaiah R. Sutton. Angela Michelle Bolton, magnum cum laude. Leticia Smith. And with her bachelor's is Ramona Renee Watson, magna cum laude. Also with his bachelor's is Andre Lamar Brown, cum laude. Okay, so, so. And with her associates, it's Tabitha L. Mays Wilson. Lisa Marie Maurer. Kiana Jackson. <laughs> Sheila Hill. Randolph Thomas Cuthbert. <laughs> David Dupree. Justin Nava Valencia, summa cum laude. Brittany Clark. Renee M. Robinson. Justina D. Ward. Desiree Freeman. 
Evelyn R. Woodley. Julieta Diaz. Latifa Brown. Renee Adderley. Kiana McCauley. Carrie Ann A. McCorkle. I am also now pleased to conduct the roll call for human resource management candidates. President Mergiati, I have the honor of recommending to you the following list of human resource management candidates. Those present collectively and, and individually, together with others in absentia, have met all the requirements for the Bachelor of Science degree. The Bachelor of Science candidates for human resource management are Tina White. Tymika McCaskill. Dura Ann Horn. Tracy L. Thompson, Magnum Cum Laude. Camilla Shamsandeed. Yolanda Siobhan Adolphus. Sierra Nishe Tillman. I will now conduct the roll call for our integrated leadership candidates for graduation. President Mergiati, I have the honor of recommending to you the following list of integrated leadership degree candidates. Those present collectively and individually, together with others in absentia, have met all the requirements for the Bachelor of Science degree. The Bachelor of Science candidates for integrated leadership are Jonathan Anthony Turner, cum laude. Cheryl D. Holmes. Carmen Barnes. Janika Sibby. Joseph M. Juarez, Jr., magnum cum laude. Brian Richard Gombert, summa cum laude. William Vincent Sarmel, summa cum laude. Selena Haynes. Patricia Marie Farrell Dukes, cum laude. John T. Payton, magnum cum laude. Amira Murray Whitaker. Crystal Ashley Carson. Hello, I am Kate Watson, Assistant Professor of Health Programs. I'm pleased this evening to call the role of Healthcare Administration candidates for graduation. President Mergiati, I have the honor of recommending to you the following list of Healthcare Administration degree candidates, those present collectively and individually, together with others in absentia, have met all the requirements of the bachelor, degree of bachelor of Science degree. The Bachelor of Science candidates for Healthcare Administration are Katrina LeBlanc, <laughs> Katrina LeBlanc 
Sharon Rose Weeks. Tanisha Oates. Asia Alexandra Jennings. Christina Volt. Kristen George. Nellie Manier. Lakeisha Sanders. And Di Riley. Monica Rollerson. Amanda Pueyes. Anthony Hudgens. I am now pleased to call the role of Health Information Administration and Health Information Technology candidates for graduation. President Mergiati, I have the honor of recommending to you the following list of Health Information Administration and Health Information Technology degree candidates. Those present, collectively and individually, together with others in absentia, have met all the requirements for the Bachelor of Science or Associate in Science degree. The Bachelor of Science candidates for Health Information Administration are Latoya Jones. Donna Adkins. Eunice Jones. Lalalia Villafane Nolan. Michelle Ann Green. The Associate in Science candidates for Health Information Technology are Tara Brody, Tamika Herring, Marie Etienne. Cynthia Peralta. Stacy Wright. Mira Carla Brown. Shakoya Mormon. Dana Graham. Good evening. I'm Dr. Brian Finnegan, Dean of Information Technology and General Education. I am pleased this evening to call the role of Information Technology candidates for graduation. President Mergiati, I have the honor of recommending to you the following list of Information Technology degree candidates. Those present, collectively and individually, together with others in absentia, have met all the requirements for the Bachelor of Science degree or the Associate in Science degree. And the Bachelor of Science candidates for Information Technology are... John R. Salat. Ephraim, do you have a card? Are you uh, Summa Magna? I know you have honors, okay. 
Efrain Aponte, summa cum laude. Brian George Phillips. Thank you, Adil. Adil Sabor Strowman. Beverly Nicole Simpson. Anthony Dante Bowie. Kevin Joseph Riffle, cum laude. <laughs> Betalil Severe. Ta Adin. Jason Michael Memo. Michael R. Jones. Benet Lavelle Morando. Dada Tarai. And the Associate in Science candidates for Information Technology are Duval Dion Stevens, Charles Edward Young, I'm also pleased this evening to call the role of technology management candidates for graduation. President Mergiotti, I have the honor of recommending to you the following technology management degree candidates. Those present, collectively and individually, together with others in absentia, have met all the requirements for the Bachelor of Science degree. And the Bachelor of Science candidates for technology management are Lloyd Harris, cum laude. Dale Robert Jefferson, summa cum laude. Wayne Vance, summa cum laude. <laughs> I'm also pleased this evening to call the role of general studies candidates for graduation. President Mergiotti, I have the honor of recommending to you the following list of general studies degree candidates. Those present, collectively and individually, together with others in absentia, have met all the requirements for the, best, for the Associate in Arts degree. And the Associate in Arts candidates for general studies are... Tanya Jones, magna, sum, magna cum laude. Erica A. Johnson. Tawanda Larise Farrell. Nakia M. Busemi, cum laude. Carter Kaylee Campbell, cum laude. Herbert E. Harris. Marcia L. Dotson. Veronica Y. Wall. Good evening, I'm Ivy Kempf, Professor of Legal Studies. I'm delighted to call the role of paralegal studies candidates for graduation. President Mergiati, 
I have the honor of recommending to you the following list of paralegal studies degree candidates. Those present, collectively and individually, together with others in absentia, have met all of the requirements for the Bachelor of Science degree, Associates in Science degree, or the Post-Bachelor Certificate of Proficiency. The Bachelor of Science candidates for paralegal studies are Panjola Alika. <laughs> Melissa Pagano. <laughs> Chahida Crane. <laughs> Shelly Lynn Bastos. Kimberly Ann Mosley. Iusi Ned, magna cum laude. Karen Brown, cum laude. Serena M. Burns. Kimberly Elizabeth Stutz. Sierra Lashane Ford. Nehaya Raid Hilo. Michael J. Savage, cum laude. Gloria Louise Witt. Judith Ann Gerhardt, cum laude. Carol Ann Newhouse. Danielle Villa. Juanita Stokes. Sandra Lewis. Charles Gerald Quinn. The Associates in Science candidates for paralegal studies are Michael Christopher Smokolski. Juanita N. Downing. Takiba Williams. Camila Lathan, magna cum laude. <laughs> Natasha Mack. In the world, you knew that. Brandy Boyd. Martha Lorena Lopez Cardoza. Karina Sichkina. Yekaterina Popova. I am now delighted to call the roll of the Legal Studies and Business candidates for graduation. President Mergiati, I have the honor of recommending to you the Legal Studies and Business degree candidates. 
those present collectively and individually together with, together with others in Abstentia have met all of the requirements for the Bachelor of Science degree. The Bachelor of Science candidates for legal studies and business are Leslie Barrett. Danielle E. Golden. I am now delighted to call the role of Criminal Justice Studies candidates for graduation. President Mergiati, I have the honor of recommending to you the following list of Criminal Justice Studies degree candidates. Those present collectively and individually, together with others in abstentia, have met all of the requirements for the Bachelor of Science or the Associates in Science degree. The Bachelor of Science candidates for criminal justice are Shakia Livingston. Brittany Sharita McGee. Cum laude. <laughs> Melissa Renee Holden. Welcome. Brenda Marlene Eldridge. <laughs> Anthony William Young, magna cum laude. Ruby Felder. The Associate of Science candidates for Criminal Justice Studies are Adrian Robinson. Shanice A. Blake. Joseph Dominic Pizzo. And Don Nelson. Hello again, I'm Dr. Adrian Zapala, Dean of Graduate Studies. President Mergiati, I have the honor of recommending to you the following organizational leadership and management degree candidate. Those present collectively and individually together with others in absentia have met all the requirements for the Master of Science degree in organizational leadership. Giselle Awilda Marte Torres. All right, are you ready to do this now? Let's have another round of applause for the class of 2017. I'm now going to ask the graduates on stage to join me at the podium. I can't believe I had to coax Efren. Okay, please stand.
Okay. As president of Pierce College, I have the honor this evening of conferring degrees on our graduates. By the power vested in me, by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and the Board of Trustees of Pierce College, I officially recognize and confer the Master of Science degree, the Bachelor of Science degree, the Associate in Science degree, the Associate in Arts degree, and the Certificate of Proficiency on you as the graduates of Pierce College, Class of 2017. And now the big moment, are you ready? In recognition, you can move your tassels from right to left. Okay, please be seated. Thank you. Thank you. I am very pleased to call upon Mr. Barry James, class of 2007 and president of the Pierce College Alumni Association to formally induct the class of 2017 into the Alumni Association. Barry. I am here to officially welcome you to the Pierce College Alumni Association. As president of the association, I ask you to stay in touch with the college, and I pledge that we will work to help you keep close ties to each other individually and to the Pierce alumni community as a whole. We welcome our associate graduates to continue towards your bachelor's degree and our bachelor's graduates to apply for our master's degree program. Again, let me extend a very special congratulations to our master's graduates. I look forward to your participation as well. It is indeed an honor to induct each of you as members in good standing in the Pierce College Alumni Association. Finally, I encourage all of you to support our Pierce mission and students who will someday sit where you are seated today. Remember to pay it forward by giving of your time talent, and treasure. Congratulations, and best of luck in your future endeavors. On behalf of Dr. Monica Melpass, the trustees, faculty, staff, and administration of Pierce College, I extend congratulations to the class of 2017. Family and friends, kindly remain at your seats until the graduates have exited. Graduates, enjoy the sounds of happy, which you should be, as you proceed out the hall.